are the Ashanti people. Thanks for being a part of the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please remember that we can only continue this series with your support. So please, please support us by subscribing and giving us a thumbs up. You can also help by sharing our videos with your friends and contacts. Thank you. Another kingdom that emerged strong in West Africa was the Ashanti Kingdom. The Ashanti, a group of Aka people, populated the area which now um, constitutes South Central, uh, South Central Ghana and adjacent areas of uh, Togo and Cote d'Ivoire. They speak a Twi language of the Kwa language group. It is believed that the speakers of Kwa languages originated somewhere in East um, Central Africa. And by the 12th century, Bonoman, an Akan kingdom, was thriving in gold trade. And by the 13th uh, century, several other Akan states also began to rise as major players in the gold trade. In the 17th century, a group of Ashanti states became unified into a confederation under Osei Kofi Tutu, and the golden stool then became the symbol of their unity. The political, uh, military, and spiritual foundations of the Ashanti kingdom date to this um, ruler, Osei Tutu. Under Osei Tutu, the Ashanti successfully embarked on massive territorial expansions by constituting a highly disciplined army. The Ashanti also began celebrating the Odwira or Yam Festival as a symbol of national unity. The conquest of some of their neighbors gave them access to coastal areas and they began to trade with Europeans who had by this time um, succeeded in making incursions into the region. At, the high, at its height, the Ashanti Empire included all of present-day Ghana and large parts of Côte d'Ivoire. The capital of the empire was Kumasi. And one of the remarkable um, qualities of the empire was that it was matrilineal. And uh, the ruler, known as Asantehene, inherited his power from his mother. The empire was administered by an efficient civil service made up of talented traders, diplomats, and members of the military. There was also a well-established network of roads built to connect the coast to the middle uh, Niger, linking together major um, trade uh, cities. Like other African societies around this period, the Ashantis typically took captives during warfare. However, the system of slavery was rather complex. The welfare of slaves varied in that some were allowed to acquire wealth and intermarry with free people. And um, even members of their owner's family, they could marry into their owner's family. Again, slaves could sometimes request a new master if they were uh, maltreated by their master. In some instances, free born men deliberately chose to marry enslaved women because married to an enslaved woman allowed children to inherit some of their father's property and status, whereas married to a free born woman prevented this since inheritance was matrilineal and children were considered born into the mother's clan, and so they took their status from her family. This matrilineal system also meant that a woman's 
eldest brother served as mentor to her children, particularly the boys. And a married woman was protected by her family. This was another reason why some Ashanti men preferred to marry enslaved women because such women would not have the backing of male members um, of their family to intercede on their behalf. With an uh, enslaved wife, the master and husband had total control of their children because she had no kith or kin. However, all the protection that slaves had were forfeited the moment the Ashanti began colluding with Europeans in trafficking um, slaves, in, in, in trafficking uh, um, human beings. By the early 19th century, Ashanti territory covered nearly all of present-day Ghana, including the coast where the Ashanti could trade directly with the British. In exchange for guns and uh, other European uh, goods, the Ashanti sold gold and slaves, usually either captured in war or accepted as tribute from conquered peoples. As, the, as they prospered, the Ashanti culture flourished. They became famous for gold and uh, brass uh, craftsmanship wood carving, uh, furniture making, and the intricately woven and beautifully colored kente cloth. For most of the 19th century, the Ashanti Empire remained powerful. If you've um, watched our episode on Ya Asantewa, you will recall that after her grandson, um, after her grandson was exiled, Ya Asantewa became regent of the Ejisu Juaban uh, district of the Ashanti kingdom. Uh, please make time to watch um, the episode that we did on this remarkably brave woman. In a single-minded pursuit to break the backbone of the uh, Ashanti kingdom, the British Governor General of the Gold Coast, um, Frederick Hodgson, demanded that the golden stool of the Ashanti be handed over to him. But the Ashanti refused. The golden stool was the Ashanti uh, throne and a symbol of Ashanti autonomy. Frederick Hodgson then sent his colonial uh, officials out to find this tool because the Ashanti kept um, refusing uh, to surrender it. Instead, they had it, they, 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 they went and hid it in a safe place. The, the colonial officers went from village to village trying to force the people to reveal where the golden stool um, was hidden without any success. They ransacked village after village and even assaulted young children when they could not find the adults who went into hiding to avoid getting caught, beaten, and arrested by the colonial um, agents. By March 1900, things had so degenerated that Ya Ashantewa was chosen by the regional Ashanti kings to lead the Ashanti fighting force in resisting the British onslaught. As a woman, her appointment as war leader was most unusual in Ashanti history. She, however, proved to be worth, you know, um, her metal. Some accounts actually refer to the Ashanti British War of the Golden Stool as the Ya Ashantewa War. For several months, the Ashanti troops, made up of about 5,000 um, people under the leadership of Ya Ashantewa, laid siege to the British mission, which was stationed at the, uh, at the fort in Kumasi. They succeeded in cornering um, the British, who then brought in 
reinforcements made up of several thousand troops and artillery. This then allowed the British to succeed in breaking the Ashanti siege. Ya Ashantewa and 15 of her closest advisors were then captured and sent into exile in Seychelles. Ya Ashantewa was the last African woman to lead a major war against colonial powers and was a critical figure in mobilizing both men and women to resist colonial power. Her exile and uh, subsequent death also mark the end of the glorious Ashanti kingdom. Currently, the Ashanti are still one of uh, Ghana's largest ethnic groups. They occupy South Central Ghana and the Ashanti kingdom was uh, declared a crown colony in 1902 following the, the Ya Ashantewa War. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Don't forget to help sustain us by sharing our videos with your friends and contacts. Also, send your questions and comments to our community page. Thank you.